My name is Joe Deacon. I'm the Assistant Public Works Director for the City of Simi Valley. I want to talk to you tonight about a feasibility study to develop the Simi Valley Basin as a local water resource. Okay. We, we know we all need water. It is essential to life. And I'll talk about the local water picture. Okay. And I am having some trouble. It's not reading this play right. Um, this is half the map I usually show. Sorry about that. I am only going to talk to you about the waterworks district run by the city of Simi Valley. There are two water companies that serve the city. Golden State Water Company serves the central part of the city and some parts to the east extreme. I am in this light green. If your bill says city of Simi Valley, then our district serves you. If you are served by Golden State Water Company, I'm not going to be addressing you tonight. I'm only talking about what the district plans to do. For the city plans to do. Next. So the district of the city, we get your water from the state water project. Next. 98% of the community's water is imported from Northern California. The other 2% is recycled water, raw water, and a little tiny bit that we treat in California. That's it. So almost all of it comes from Northern California. That water that comes from Northern California switches hands several times. It comes to the state water project. You may know it as the California Aqueduct. It goes to Metropolitan Water District. We sells it to Cayuga Spinos Water District. We sells it to us. Next. The consumption in the city's service area is six billion gallons per year last year. And we sell water by a different quantity. I'm going to refer to this a little later. So I'll walk you through it a little bit. We buy and sell water by a quantity called an acre foot. It's a unit of volume that is one acre in area, one foot thick, about a third of a million gallons. So this six billion gallons that the community is using right now equates to about 18,000 acre feet per year that the city needs to buy to serve its customers. Next. So what are the challenges? Next. Um, I mentioned on the lower left in that light green, the community's dependence on imported water. What does that mean? It means we are vulnerable. We are vulnerable to risks such as droughts and earthquakes. We've seen droughts and what it does. We have been told to reduce our water consumption, to reduce our irrigation uh, allotments. And an earthquake could be even more devastating. Predictions are if an earthquake were to hit the Bay Delta area where all water from Northern California must flow through, we could be cut off from our primary water supply for months, possibly years. So in looking at this, it's part of the reason we're looking for other sources of water. One of the things I also plan for is shown in the purple climate change. Climate change is important to our water scenario because the, the state water project system was built on a snow melt theory. So snow falls in the Sierras in the winter time, starts to melt slowly as weather starts to warm up in the springtime, trickles into the streams, and fills the reservoirs on a sort of manageable basis with that trickle that starts. In a climate change scenario where we are seeing less snow and more rain, and maybe that's temporary, but if it is a trend that we can expect long term, then what we're seeing is more flashy precipitation, more floods, and less opportunity to capture that water in the state water project reservoirs. Excellent. So it's just another risk. So we're looking locally. One of the resources we have locally is the Simi Valley Basin. It's shown here on this slide in the blue outline. 
And I just wanted to show you that it roughly depicts the outline of the city limits. It looks sort of like, like the city limits of Simi Valley. Next. The Simi Valley Basin is a local, reliable water source. Next. We, we are considering other options. We have considered other options. I just wanted to give you an update on some consideration of other options that have been considered and, and will continue to be considered. Ocean desal is probably one of the more common considerations that Southern Californians have. Why don't we just desal the ocean? Cayagas looked at the opportunity to, to do ocean desal for their service area of Ventura County. And they estimated that to do ocean desal now for imported water from Northern California. So in their planning horizon, they did not believe it was cost effective to consider to consider that further as one of the primary options for water sources. Other options may include conservation. In all conservation scenarios, people still need water. While we can reduce some, and in fact, the, the city's uh, community, those we serve, those of you we serve, you've reduced water consumption by about 30% since the bulk, the biggest water uses about a decade ago. From then to now, less 30%. So conservation has taken us a long way already, but we're still going to have demands. People still need water. So other options to consider, rain capture. It is an, op an opportunity. You, you might hear more about that tonight, you have a funny feeling. But um, one, of, one of the things that I want to appeal to you is is that the basin captures rain. It's one of the things, we've already got a system that does it. Simi Valley Basin is a rain capture device. And water recycling may be part of our long-term solution. We recently had a setback on a project we were planning to expand the recycled water system in the western part of town. We couldn't find the customer support to make it cost effective. And we have since postponed any further work on that. But I do believe that water recycling, using our wastewater again, will ultimately be part of the community solution. Next slide. So what's the feasibility of using the groundwater? We, are, we have drafted a feasibility study, and I'm out here tonight telling you I'd like you to read it. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, it is posted on our website. And I'll give you the, the website address here in just a minute. The feasibility study issues such as the treatment requirements for using the Simi Valley Basin, the other infrastructure that would be required, pipelines, wells, <coughs> real estate, and they did a comprehensive cost estimate for building a system that would provide for treated water using the Simi Valley Basin. There was an earlier study that was completed in 2016 that characterized the Simi Valley Basin. Really an update. The Simi Valley Basin has been studied in the past. The city commissioned some studies in the 1980s. Those studies were basically refreshed. Our consultant looked at the, the historical documents, took that look, looked at new data, and, and, and refreshed the uh, basin in this characterization study within 2016. Um, the, the main findings from that characterization study is that the basin has a sustainable yield that would provide us a water source, and that the quality of the water is such that with reverse osmosis, it would meet drinking water standards. Next slide. So both studies, found the water is suitable for drinking. There are no serious water quality issues. And I just want to make sure I stay here for a second because we're going to talk more about cost. If people are concerned that all that's concerned is cost, that's not our concern. Our first concern is safety for community. Always is, always will be with the water system. I would not recommend something to my city council that I thought was unsafe for the community. So I believe it's safe. I believe our studies prove that it's safe. And that is why I'm going to consider other things, such as cost. Next. 
So, so we are seeking comments. This is the address on our website at which you can find the study if you are interested in looking for it. And as I mentioned, this, the feasibility, well, I may not have mentioned, but the feasibility study had its findings. It found that the project was feasible. It did do a comprehensive cost estimate that I mentioned. It estimated that the infrastructure cost for a treatment system, as recommended, would cost $87 million. No small investment. That, and and we're, we're coming out here early, just talking about the study at this point. There's a lot of other work we would need to do in order to put a project together, including acquiring real estate, developing a, a comprehensive environmental analysis, publishing that, answering comments to that, seeking project approvals from the city council. A couple of times we'll have to go back and get their approvals. All those things are yet to be determined. That's my TBD there. Those are yet to be done. So we're here coming out early in the process, letting you know what we're thinking of doing. One of the project, the feasibility study found that the type of treatment recommended, reverse osmosis, requires a brine disposal opportunity. So I'll get into that a little bit next. So the Cayagas Municipal Water District is building the Salinity Management Pipeline. They call it the SMP. Most people in this room, you probably, those people that remember, from years ago, probably still called the Brian Line, which is what Kayak has called it when they first proposed the project. So if you look in the lower left on this slide, that is where the outfall is located in the Fort Miami area. The outfall has been built, and that pipe is actually operating. They, are, they have built a pipeline to Somis. There are connections to the Salinity Management Pipeline at this time, and there is a discharge permit <coughs> for discharges into the ocean of brine discharges. Next. The Salinity Management Pipeline, as you see in that purple, sort of in the middle, where it says phase three, right in this area, is going to branch into Santa Rosa Valley. And that branch is what is currently planned to extend as far as Simi Valley based on our demand. So should we go forward, with a desal project here in Simi Valley. Okay, I guess we'll bring the Salinity Management Pipeline to Simi Valley for our use as early as by 2023. Next. So I do want to get a little bit into water cost. Next. I told you we buy water at, in the quantities of an acre foot. We pay about $1,500 per acre foot. Next. I mentioned we will buy about 18,000 acre feet in the next year, next. Our water budget in the block, in the fiscal year budget that was just adopted is $27.2 million to buy water to sell to the community. And the reason I wanna give you this number is, earlier I mentioned $87 million of construction costs, which again, I'm not, I'm not blowing sunshine here, it's a big number. And it's a big investment we need to be delivered. But I just want to give it some context. We deal in very big numbers with the water budget. Buying water is very expensive. And so this is, a, this is my current annual budget. And next, please. OK, so I'll get back to what we consider in the future. I'll give you a bigger picture of what the overall financing structure looks like. I mentioned earlier the capital cost is estimated to be $87 million. <coughs> we estimate that operations and maintenance would be an annual cost of $6 million. We estimate that the product or the project could produce about 5,500 acre feet per year. That would offset about 30% of the imported water we, purchase, we currently purchase. The project is estimated to have about a 20 to 30 year payback. We're still in the conceptual phase. Realize there's a lot of room between 20 and 30 years, but we're still in the conceptual level of analysis. So we'll tighten that up as we go further. But I want to talk to you further about one of the important things is it could be a good inflation hedge. And to talk about the hedge, 
and a hedge, for those of you who aren't in finances all the time, a hedge is generally a way of giving yourself assurance of what you think is going to happen, what you project will happen in the future. So next slide, please. So based on the history of the cost of water, next. I did a little chart of what water has cost versus what the consumer price index has been. And these are not water has cost. Water increases have been versus consumer price index increase since 2005. The blue bars here represent the consumer price index. And the red bars represent the increase in the cost of water for that year. And you see in most cases, in a couple of cases, the CPI or consumer price index was higher. But in most cases, the cost of water greatly outstripped the consumer price index, and in some cases, dramatically so. So in summary, over this period of time, these 14 years, while the consumer price index increased 32.5%, the cost of water next increased 102.4%. Now, this was a particularly dramatic time of water rate increases. There have been some pent up because water rates hadn't been increased for some years before that. But, and this isn't the increase, especially that you've seen, although you probably is. And this is the increase in cost of water that the city has had to buy imported. And our funding base is our customers. We don't make profit. We don't get money from anywhere else I'm from charging customers for water. So it's a zero sum balance. Customers pay in, but money goes out to buy the water, pay for the electricity, and other services to get water to your homes. So going forward, those providers of water, Cayugas Municipal Water District, Metropolitan Water District has cautioned that it's likely to be at, a, at an increase that'll be approximately double the, the CPI for the foreseeable future, 10 years and then. So that's why I talk about an inflation hedge. If we can build something where we can control the cost locally, we may be able to control what could be greater escalating costs of imported water. Next. So community considerations. I think there are many. I'm going to list a few. Um, some of those I wish that you would consider is water reliability is a major issue. The loss of water to a community is a serious economic impact, perhaps devastating if there was a complete loss of water. And with 98% of our water dependent on import from Northern California, we are in serious dependency on an outside source. The investment in reliability is a value to the community. Next. So proposing to develop a local water resource, it provides reliability, flexibility. Flexibility can come from if you have a local basin and there's a local management of that basin, you perhaps can manage when you use it to use it when you need it most, and then lay off its use to let it recharge to its sustainable level when things are looking better from other sources. So you have another means in your portfolio to manage those peaks and droughts from other sources. And it has long-term cost effectiveness, which I tried to mention in my hedge chart. And it's the best assurance against interruption. If you have a local source, it's a good, it's a good insurance against interruption from a, from bringing it hundreds of miles away from an outside source. Next, this this is basically where I conclude. I would like to hear your thoughts. Um, consider other alternatives, other questions we need to consider before proceeding, and what does the community want, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. All right, uh, now we begin with public comment questions. And uh, I'll ask if you can, uh, when I select you, we'll start with the front row and work our way around in the back. If you can say your name and what neighborhood council you're from. So, starting here from the right. Thank you. 
Can you stand up, please? It's very difficult to hear you. Oh, my apologies. Just a curiosity question. I'm not from Simi Valley. I'm from South and Oaks. From 2005 to 2018, you said there was a massive increase of water usage. What was the difference in residency? Did you have a lot more people coming in from 2005 to 2018? I'm sorry if you misinterpreted my chart. There's actually been a decrease in usage over that period of time. I was talking strictly about cost. Well, that chart was about cost, okay, not about I'm wondering, not sir, usage. I'm just wondering, sir, if the, the cost went up also, did, did the um, more people come into the area also? Do you know that? Does anyone know that? No. I believe the community has grown over time. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Hi, my name is Melissa Bumstead. I'm actually a resident of West Hills, but I've become involved after starting a change.org petition that has nearly 270,000 signatures. After I learned that the Santa Susana field lab may have given my daughter and nearly 50 other children in our community rare forms of cancer. Um, first, I do want to address the Golden State water issue briefly because I feel like it is important because it is the trust that we that the residents have in Simi Valley. When I say we, it's because I'm also speaking on behalf of many friends that I have who were not able to come tonight. Um, I have been incredibly concerned that this uh, Golden State has refused to release all of the data about their water. Um, they only made the perchlorate data available last week in response to consumer outrage. The perchlorate levels are at 4.6 micrograms per liter which was shocking since the Department of Toxic Substances has repeatedly claimed that there's been no perchlorate in the, our local, in the local water here. Um, 4.6 is within the legal level, but it's also the controversial maximum contamination level. Uh, the health goal is only one microgram per liter. So Golden State is actually selling water right now to consumers at five times over that health goal. Um, and the city has allowed it. That is a big trust issue in general. Um, we have the perchlorate levels, but Golden State has not released the data about the TCU or the tritium, uh, the tritium in the wells. So I'm, that is also why I'm speaking. 30 seconds. I'm sorry? 30 seconds. Thank you. That is also why I'm against the proposal for residents in Simi to drink water. These things. Boeing has shown that poisonous ra radium nuclei tritium has been found in the surface water, four times the national drinking limit, um, and that reverse osmosis cannot remove tritium. Um, I read the Hazen report, and TCE and tritinium are not included, only the perchlorate level. So I don't understand how the city is making decisions about residents drinking water when there's not complete data being made transparent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, can, I can address that to some extent if you'd like. Okay. Um, in speaking with the consultant, tritium was found at such low levels below the MCL, they, they simply didn't report it as a concern. So, it's not, it, well, if I'm allowed to answer. Well, yes, but well, we're not going into dialogue. So if you want to give a, a brief answer, that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I can't speak to the field lab contamination. I, I, I simply don't regulate it. It's not Simi Valley. I'm not speaking to the field lab. That is what I'm you're talking about here. I know, but. Hey. I'm sorry. Please. If, if I may, I'm talking about the Simi Valley Basin, which is a different source, completely different. And so the tritium levels were well below the MCL. Um, it, it's not a matter we're trying to hide anything. It's just not a concern. So that, that, that was one. As far as the city allowing Golden State Water Company, the city does not regulate Golden State Water Company. They're regulated by the California Public Utilities Commission. Um, we do not have the authority or jurisdiction to regulate the issues that you speak of with regard to the same. Thank you. Second row. Uh, We're not done with the first row. Okay. Hi, my name is Victoria Catherine Wright, and I live in neighboring council district four. Um, basically, my concern is you're never going to get the people in the community on board. There's just no way. I don't care what kind of studies you put out there. What you do in the back of people's mind is the groundwater is contaminated, plain and simple. The mountain cannot be cleaned up. The contamination in 1998 was looked at by the state, drilled all the way down to the bedrock, the bedrock's contaminated. 
any rainwater, it possible that it's safe. The fluoride could come from farming, because this was a big farming community. Back in the 40s and 50s, they used fertilizer that did contain those substances. So that could be some of it. My thought is this. If you can't get people's minds wrapped around it, how about if we build a lake? There's a whole valley that sits behind us between us and the 126. And if we were to go in there and build a lake, we would be able to capture more water because we have a bigger basin to catch it on, on the surface. Plus maybe it has groundwater too that would be 100% different than ours because there was never any farming over there and it's away from Rockadine. So people's hearts and minds will be able to wrap around it. I was at Royal High School today and talked to some students because I'm running for senior Valley City Council. And students asked the question about cancer, groundwater contamination. These are high school students. They're concerned about it. So I don't think you're going to get it out of people's minds. I just think at this point, if we were to build a lake for recreational use, we'd get a twofold. We'd get the water that would give us not 30%, but 100% of our water need if water was shut off to our community. 25 seconds. And in turn, it would also give us a recreational place that bring business to the city of Dallas. No comment. Uh, question is the city of Dallas. Name, 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 and, uh, name and council you live in? Name and council. Your name and My which is council you're in. And the council in which you live in? Oh, I live in the city Valley. I've here my whole life. I live in the east. See me. He's in the Stearns. Yes, sir. Okay, hey, you're number four. I'm sorry. You're yes. number four, just so you know. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry, okay. what was your name? My name's Greg. Greg. That's Montrose. Okay, thank you. Um, the question is, uh, this Simi Valley Basin, the water in the Simi Valley Basin, there's, there's so much runoff basin. <laughs> Simi Valley is a basin. Um, the hills are filtered through numerous underground caves. I've been in them. I used to crawl through them when I was a kid. Clear Springs caves all through the knolls. All the, all the way up underneath all the places where rocket eye were. Now, water runs off to there. There's really no place else to go but the basin. Is that correct? That's, I'm, I'm just asking a question. If, if the basin has runoff from a completely polluted area that runs down into the base water or the basin of Simi Valley, I agree 100% with the two persons who have spoken earlier. Um, there's no way to get rid of it. And people here in Simi are pretty well locked on to that. Um, there's all these disputes about what's really here and what isn't. I'm not a scientist, so I have to take what I'm told, but then I question it. <coughs> we see both sides. Now, what I'm concerned about is that yes, we need water resource, but I don't think what we have here is ever gonna be tapped and everybody's gonna agree upon it. We could create, like you said, a lake or numerous catch basins that would alleviate it's only 30% of what I got from your display here was that 30% of that water out of- uh, Sir, 20 seconds. 100 and some thousand. Um, still would be depleted at needing 72%. So I understand the cost, but the cost of health. I lost a very good friend. I lost two family members, and a very good friend of mine, his father who worked for Rocky Dunning, died of cancer, horribly. Now, Sir. this stuff, this stuff can be tolerated. I'm done. This study concluded there's no there's no known hydraulic connection between rock and iron site and the city of Valley Basin. So there's no, what you described, we are not finding. No. I, I crawled through those caves. They are underground right now. Okay. Okay. Move to the next row. I'm Pink Song, and I, I live in number four. Um, I haven't heard enough assurances that, in fact, there isn't uh, contaminants in the water, and I think there is some risk in going forward. And therefore, I don't feel I could uh, uh, go for it. The other, the other issue I see is the cost. 
Basically, you need to check your numbers on the uh, desalinization stuff. Um, they're using reverse osmosis too. Um, you, there seems to be a feeling that the far end of Simi Valley is safe. Well, back in 1950s, when they, when the thing went off, they had barrels of stuff. They got put in our dump. Back in the 1950s. You never lined a dump, so that stuff is down there. A couple hundred feet of dirt over it, so you'll never detect it, but it's down there and it's reaching into the water. It's coming this way, okay? So you got tritium at Brandeis Barnine that's been found and documented. You're pumping water out of the other end of the table, okay? The city of Anaheim pumps water into the ground to affect the water at Manhattan Beach and Redondo Beach so salt water doesn't come in. That far away, 30 miles. You're a couple hundred, you're a couple hundred yards down the road pumping water out. So I think you got something really to worry about. And also I, I have no confidence in the water folks. They were selling water for years at less than it was costing them. And now they're in a hole that's huge. And they're looking for revenue to bring themselves out of it. 20 seconds. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> Any other questions on that second row? <coughs> we'll be back to the third row. Samantha Siegel, Neighborhood Council 4. <laughs> From a fiscal perspective, first of all, I agree with everything that's been said regarding the health aspects. But from a fiscal perspective, we're looking at a 20 to 30 year break even point. How much water using 20% do we think we have in there? Do we have more than 30 years? In the basin? Yes. I mean, How so is that the, the numbers I showed assumed a sustainable basin. In other words, it will last forever. At, at 20 to 30% of our water. At 30% of our water. I said 30%. I didn't say 20%. Thank you. Thank you. Next. I'm Melissa Spina from District 4. Um, I just have a few things to touch on. Um, I was on well water, and the child that I was pregnant with did have cancer. My other two children were affected. One of them has a skin problem. The other one had to have her teeth taken out when she was two, two years old at UCLA Dental Center. She had to have all of her teeth taken out of baby root canals. So I'm living proof that there's something wrong with the water because I have three kids that were affected by it. Not only did my daughter get Hodgkin's lymphoma, but two years later, this 
the girl that lives on the end of our street got Hodgkin's lymphoma as well, which seems to be a very common cancer amongst teenagers in Simi Valley. As for Golden State Water Company, they lied to me four years ago. They said they were using between one and 3% groundwater in the water, when in reality it's been 15%. And the 15%, the, the groundwater is not good by itself. Once they mix it in with 85% of good water, <coughs> then it passes a level to where it's acceptable for them to sell. But it doesn't mean that the water is safe. They mix bad water with good water, which makes it all bad. Um, I completely lost track of everything I wanted to say because I'm completely overwhelmed at this. I think this is absolutely ridiculous. We haven't even cleaned up on the hill yet because they don't know how. So as for things trickling down, I'm very concerned about everything trickling down from up on the hill every time it rains and every time the wind blows because a lot of those chemicals are airborne chemicals. So we can't clean up the hillside yet. How in the world do you plan on cleaning up the water down here when nobody has figured out a way to clean it up yet? 20 seconds. I'm just really upset because my kid had cancer and nobody helped my family and nobody tested anything and now you guys are proposing to use the groundwater. That's it. Next. Dawn Kowalski and I live in the unincorporated area of Fort, neighbor of Fort in the north. I've been um, going to meetings for 30 years. Next year will be 30 years uh, through the DTSC, EPA. I've been to Sacramento. I've been all over the place. There is a tremendous problem up on the hill. They lost a quarter of a million gallons of TCE, a known carcinogen, that has gone into the bedrock, that has gone down to the groundwater. We have a plume of oil that has already gone onto Sage Ranch. We have problems in Brandeis Bardeen, where they had wells tested that were polluted. We've had um, pollution on Runkel Ranch, where they found strontium-90, which is a radioactive contamination. The chemicals are unbelievable, and we've been waiting for a cleanup now since, which was meant to be finished last year. Now they're saying that maybe another 17 more years before they get it cleaned up. We cannot even consider using groundwater. It's so contaminated. If you want to use groundwater, kiss your grandchildren goodbye, because it's serious. Um, we've got a lot of cancer. The biggest amount of cancer are on the west end of the San Fernando Valley and in Simi Valley. East end of Simi. The one thing that sits above the hill is rocket dying. It's totally polluted. There was a partial meltdown, nuclear meltdown, where the cores melted. You know, it's a problem. And if people don't want to look at it, if the city doesn't want to look at it, then that's really a shame because it needs to be looked at. We've been to meetings with renowned scientists from around seconds. the country, and they have said that it is a problem with the water going into the groundwater, the pollution. My name is Marie Mason. I live in the unincorporated area of Area 4. Um, I, along with Dawn, have been going to meetings for 30 years. I won't touch on that. I have a question, Joe. Um, your slide showed that it'll, you're going to get 5,500 acre feet out of this groundwater if it ever happened. Yes. Okay. That, how much rain are you, how, how was that calculated? Because if it was calculated on our normal rainfall, that isn't reality. So how is it calculated that you're going to get that? I mean, this isn't, I think it, the whole thing's absurd anyway, that we would even consider it. But even if we did consider it, um, I don't, how, how much water are we going to get for all that money? Because it's, you're not going to put water in the basin from the twilight zone, so the water's coming from rain. And if we don't get any rain, why are we spending all this money and even risk any of our children or our, Health. It doesn't make any sense. You're not going to get enough water to pan out for anybody. It doesn't make sense to me. And there, the water is contaminated. Dr. Tabidian, he was, lived in Simi Valley. He was a professor at Cal at CSUN. He did a very extensive study. Um, there are studies. It's online. I can get it to you. But there, it does come into Simi Valley. So I know that's been the theory. I've sat in thousands of meetings that the water flows the other way. It doesn't flow into Simi. But Dr. Tabidian proved that it does flow into Simi. And there is flow that comes down. I just don't think it's worth it. I mean, how much rainfall do you have? Do you know? 
how much rainfall your study was predicated on? It is based on historic rainfall. And the historic rainfall, which is totally different than reality for today. 20 seconds. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Ann Munyai. I'm in Area 4. I want to mirror a lot of these thoughts. And I have the same insight to you about the rainfall. Again, until the cleanup is done, um, hasn't even started, we know there's a problem. In my neighborhood alone, I've lost four friends. My daughter has thyroid disease. My sister is battling lymphoid cancer and breast cancer. And our other four-legged friends, our neighborhood, we've lost up to 15 dogs in the last four years and a number of probably two dozen cats. A lot of mouth can oral cancers of our four-legged friends. It's there, and we, we need to acknowledge it. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Next, any more on that row? Oh. So, <clears throat> my name is Dan McClea. I live at uh, the other end of the city, the west side, where Royal and Mater are I do have a question directly to you on terms of, of the cost analysis. You mentioned in your slide that it cost about $87 million in capital investment, $6 million a year in maintenance. How about other operation costs? Are we going to pay for the brine that is going down the river? The, the operations you... and maintenance cost was inclusive of brine disposal. The capital was inclusive of brine capital. And operations and maintenance also included replacement so investment. Know. So it was, that was meant to be an inclusive cost. You are mentioning that the costs from, you could say what's from the ocean you use our own system. So it's going to be about two times more expensive compared to your cost or to today's current cost? Well, Cayagas Municipal Water District looked at the ocean diesel for their service <coughs> area, and they considered it about twice as expensive as what they pay Metropolitan. Well, if it would be to take water from there, do you still have the issue of 30% water to be supported? Or is it going to be 100%? Sorry, sir, we can't have a conversation. You can ask your question, make a comment, then that's it. Okay, You'll have another opportunity at the end, at the next, next round. Right, so Otherwise, this will go on all night. It goes back to what we said here before by other members of the community. But the best, this plan provides only 30% of what we have. I, I will ask you as council of the city to consider the benefits and the risks because you might not have a problem the first year. You might have a problem the next 10 and 15 and 20 years down the road. And what do you do at that point? Because you already spent $87 million. How do you walk away from this project and invest in another one? Why not buy the bullet up front, invest this project, get the water from the ocean and be done about it? It's an uninterrupted supply of water to us. We have what it has in it. Of course, we need to look at those numbers as well go from there. Why risk it? Why, how much you want to put on it? Whose life is worth it to take a risk on it? Why not go to a source that you know is there always and it's going to give you what you need to get? And the price cost is going to be comparable. It's not going to be so hard. Why not? Hello, my name is Gary Gottlieb. I'm from Giovanni. I live in neighborhood three. I was on city council three. I moved here in 2005 and was assured that there was plenty of water and we were going to keep a low volume of population. Because the city spends more than we bring in, we have more people come all the time. We use more water all the time. We pay more for water all the time. This man mentioned that if there is a quake, if there is a quake, we may be out of water for months or years. Why are we putting up with this? We need to stop building in Simi Valley. We need to start buying our water from the ocean and paying for what it costs because we're, we're, every time water comes through, we pay for it. It's like three times we pay increases in water. Now, of course, we need the water, but we need to learn on what we can acquire, not what we might buy. Please consider paying for salination and please make sure your city council is not composed of businessmen, but of citizens. Okay, we'll go back to the fourth row. And, okay. um, I 
have, I just moved to see me recently. I'm sorry, my name is Jenny Knack, and I think I'm in uh, two. I, we just moved. From the map that I saw today, I think I'm in two. Um, I used to teach for, I'm not gonna name that organization because I don't work there anymore, but um, watershed science to low-income kids all over Los Angeles. And from what I understand, it's pretty simple. You take a marble at the top, you rain, you put a bunch of marbles, and they go in every direction. If you're sitting here telling me, common sense-wise, that all of that, all of that nuclear waste is not leaching into the groundwater little by little, we don't know when it happens. It happens, it's gonna happen for hundreds of, or thousands, or I don't know how long, but it, it hasn't stopped. I've just in the past week looked up a bunch of studies. I'd be happy to send them to you, to anyone on the council who is making decisions on this matter. There are chemicals in the groundwater. There's no way that there can't be. I talked to Pac Gen Lab or Pac Gen Lab in Moore Park. They said, you know what, don't even bother sending it in. Get reverse osmosis, get a carbon filter. They're recommending that to all of us. We shouldn't be, I'm under uh, Golden State. I'm furious that I bought a house and this, that I had no idea that my, my water, um, my drinking water consisted of contaminated groundwater from one of the worst meltdowns in this country. I have a three-year-old. I don't know how to even sell this house in good faith to anybody else. This is a sham. My other points are, um, if we are talking about taking the brine from reverse osmosis and sending it into the ocean, that, there's no away, folks. That doesn't go away. Those toxic chemicals are going to be killing the next 20 seconds, the next species, and we're going to be held reliable for it. So it will come back to us, and we're going to have to pay for that. So add that to the 87 million. And the two times the cost for salination, it's uh, too expensive to go with Cayugas, but. Reverse osmosis also costs two times as much because for every water, every clean gallon of water, you've got a gallon of waste. Thank you. Oops. Back row. My name is Tiffany Ruiz. Um, I'm in District 3, and I just agree with all the comments that have been made. This is not your average city. There's something big happened here, a big deal. And like the woman was saying about the marble, the Contamination is in the dirt. It rains. The water is in the dirt. That's where we're getting our water. It's not been cleaned up. That's just very stupidity. Thank you. Uh, we'll get standing last. Okay. Next, is that it? Okay, the standing back here on the right. Hi, my name is Ruth Lovinos. I'm in Neighborhood Council 4. Um, and. I just have to ask you a question. I'm a social studies teacher, and I ask my students to question things. And um, based on questioning, and based on facts and data and research, I want to ask you a question. Why would Golden Water want to need to dilute its water to make it acceptable to the EPA standards? If, there's, if it's not contaminated, then why do they need to dilute the water? You have to ask yourself that question. What is the reasoning behind needing to dilute the water? You wouldn't need to dilute the water if it was okay, if it was fine, okay? And I'm having the same issue. I'm a cancer survivor. My daughter has lost many of her teeth and barely holding on to half of them right now. I've spent hundreds of dollars in dental care just to make sure she keeps her teeth and praying that she doesn't get, you know, cancer as well. And I've already lost four friends to cancer in the past year from Simi Valley, including a 26-year-old dance teacher from God to Dance, okay? That's not okay. Our children should not have to worry about whether or not they're gonna get cancer from the water. And no, there is no price, okay, on my child's health. Mm -hmm. There is no price. My child, my health, my children's health, my family's health is worth more than whatever money you're gonna make off of the savings from something that may or may not come to fruition and that may or may not be a long-term solution. My kids matter more than money. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Maureen Nixon, pretty sure three. Um, Neighborhood Council, three. three. I'm sorry. Um, so obviously, you know, you said not to get emotional. Every single person here is emotional. We drink this water. I just found out, you know, I have Golden State. I've been 
12 emails with the quality, you know, the quality manager um, from Sacramento trying to learn about it. So just to continue on the brain line, because everybody covered health really well, um, you know, from what I understand at the Thursday meeting, you said that they got the uh, permit 10 years ago. Uh, so we're gambling $87 million that in five years, when this is finished, nobody is going to think it's a horrific idea to take all of these toxins and put them in the ocean. So all it would take is a board, an environmental board, to say, you know what, this is a terrible idea. I don't know who said this was okay, but it's not okay. Now you spend $87 million, and where is it gonna go? I mean, that whole plan would just be done, not to mention if it doesn't rain. Um, and if you ask anybody in here, are we willing to pay two times the amount of water? My answer is yes, times a thousand percent, because we all have kids, and I can't believe we're talking about this. Any more comments or questions? Can I have a second? Just ask Jill a question about the brine line. Okay. When I, after we went to, I went to Neighborhood Council 3 and I heard about the brine line and I did some research on it. My understanding is that brine lines, eventually they could have so much salt because they're just dumping in the same place. So not even counting the toxins, just the brine, just the salt. Everybody acts like the ocean can absorb everything. What happens if, Kualanidi or whatever says, we can't take any more of this salt. So we've spent all this money, part of it, to be part of this brine line. What would happen if somebody stopped this, the ability to push it there? Because I think that's a, an issue from some of the stuff I read, that's an issue that you can't just endlessly keep putting the salt into the ocean thinking the ocean is gonna absorb it because it's a different kind of salt. It's salt, but it's, it, it's dumping it in one spot where all the you know, the marine life is. What happens if we can't do that? Have you, do you know about that, it, that it, there could be a time? I, I can't answer. I, you, you didn't answer. I, I have no answer. I mean, it is permitted now. We do assume that it will continue to be permitted. Like forever? If it, for a long time, during the operating period of this project, <coughs> yes. But do you, you, you pose a question. Congratulations. It's a question I simply can't. I don't know. Could it change in the permit view? Yes, it could. Okay. Well, I think we need to know that if we're spending well, I mean, millions, done. millions of dollars. Done. Done. Thank you. I know I'm done. <coughs> um, yeah, I just want had a couple quick questions. Um, what radionuclides uh, have you tested for, and who did the testing? Is my first question. Can you tell us what neighborhood council you're in? Oh, you know, I don't know. I spent some time living in around Stearns in the 118, but um, I don't know what neighborhood council. And your name? Adam Salt. Our, our data is mainly based on historic data that we've been able to find from basin users in the areas. What and published reports. What historical data and what radio nuclides were tested for? I can't answer that off the top of my head. I don't know. I'm just, I, I would not prepare for that question. So. <clears throat> Have you studied the Santa Susana field lab? Are you aware how far the groundwater contamination goes at the Santa Susana field lab? Yes. How far? Not to the basin. But how many feet? It does not go to the basin. My concern is about the basin. I am not characterizing the field lab in the report or at this meeting. Feet. And they and they're uncertain how far it actually goes because they haven't found the bottom yet. So does that concern you? Should. Our reports indicate that it doesn't impact the patient. It would concern me if it did, but since we have found it didn't, it, the, I, have the, not, I have not expanded that. Term. The specialists there are uncertain how far down it goes and in which directions yet, so how can you be sure when you haven't studied it? I, I'm not uncomfortable with you quoting another party. That's the department really talks about. Sir, if you're being confrontational, please do not. <laughs> I'm just expressing him that it's the Department of Toxic Substances Control. And uh, one follow-up here? Yes. Okay, Elizabeth Lincoln. I think I'm three. Um, sound on the station sounds good, 
But they've also identified nuclear contamination from Japan reaching our shore. And we, then you'll have the same brine issues. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ma'am, we're not confronting the presenter. Do you have a question or a comment? No, I just want to know that the person who is presenting is actually living in this neighborhood. I will, I, I'm not going to talk about where I live. It really is inappropriate, but I will assure you, I drink, every day I work here, I drink at least a gallon of water every day when I come to work here. So I drink the water all the time. And thank you for your presentation. It's very clear and very good. Just to follow on, my question was that uh, why... Name, which, which I think I've already asked the question yes. already. At that question, one minute. Okay. You didn't really get the chance to answer was that why with all these issues you probably knew before you uh, tell people to start the study that the main issue would be Santa Susana Field Laboratory. Why? the report is not really talking about that. It, it does. Um, I think someone here quoted it doesn't address it. There is, it may be brief, but it is in the study that there's no found connection between. There is the, the, they're talking about the Pete's laundry and the bed. The question, so you're I'm trying, and I'm trying to answer. Yeah. Our study found there was no connection. So. Okay. No. One last one over here. Yep. Melissa Spina, District 4. Um, my question is, is that if you're proposing to do this, why wouldn't you go directly to the people that have all the answers that you would need, like Marie and Don and Adam and <laughs> Melissa and um, William, the founder of the Aerospace Cancer Museum of Education? Why wouldn't you guys group up with these people that have spent 30 years of their life? And I know that because in May of 89, while I was pregnant, I called these women. I asked them, is my water contaminated? Are my kids going to get cancer? And they spent the rest of their lives since then trying to find an answer to my question. And I really think that if you are going to even propose this, you should go to the people that know what's going on. We can give you a list of they have so much research that they've done. The fact that you guys didn't go to them or, and won't listen to Adam talk, he's, of all people, he has witnessed and listened to more than probably anybody because I saw him at the meetings 10 years ago and ever since then, video and everything that goes on. These are the people you need to talk to maybe at a private meeting and find out what the truth is and look at the proof that they have to show. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, one last one. This yeah. gentleman has his phone. Uh, I currently live in Thousand Oaks. I did live off of... Your name? Trent Sigurd, sorry. Trent Sigurd. Um, I did live off of... Uh, um, right by Santa Susana. I don't know what district that is. Um, I do really think that water is a really important resource. It's something that... The Los Angeles Basin is a very uh, interesting thing with Mulholland building, the reservoir that you talked about. Um, there's one point of water that comes into Los Angeles uh, that we get our water from. And to me, that's actually really concerning. Um, I think this, we all know about the laboratory. I think it's good to discuss and consider other options because this is a problem. We all know it's a problem. Uh, and quite frankly, I want to thank the gentleman um, for coming with, um, I don't know which name. Joe, I want to thank you for coming because you have our best interests in mind. And I just want to thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, with that, we move to the board. There will be no more public discussion at this point. Now let's try and also respect the two minutes. Yeah. So, any have, collections of comments? From I have so many questions, but I am not prepared to ask them tonight. I'd like to do some. I'm of the same opinion. I need to, I need to look into this further. I think I'd like to go on record as saying I'm in support also of the using the ocean water and the even if it doubles the cost with desalination because um, it's too risky. I think I'm in agreement with that. We live in Southern California, which is a desert, 
and the only reason we live here is because we import water. I have sat on the Santa Susana Field Lab Committee for over two years. I have been through groundwater view. There was a major production that they put on, multiple days, multiple classes. I have listened to the experts. I understand what's going on at the field lab. It's been going on since the 1950s. Nobody has an answer, but we need to be looking forward to what we can do. Um, I've been a, a resident of Simi Valley for 19 years and 21 years before that I was a, I was a resident of Oak Park. Uh, I promised my uh, interview board that I would never judge a development project or anything else before NC4 before hearing all the facts. And I continue to feel they've always done that. My wife and I have lost significant friends and their children to cancer. We, made, we were made aware of the problem after moving to Oak Park because they were getting contamination on that side of the hill. <coughs> if there is only the slightest possibility of con contamination, and I mean one-tenth of one millionth percent, <coughs> we should never use our groundwater. Yeah. I have solar on my house. And when I put the solar on my house, they told me in eight or nine years, I would get my money back. <laughs> well, guys, in three and a half years, I have my money back. And I get money back every <coughs> year from SoCal Edison. Not one, 20 bucks, 50 bucks. But it's sure a lot better than spending eight or nine or $10,000 a year for electricity. So, if we pay for whatever the cost of a desalination plant, and the cost is $200 million, but we're looking at getting our money back in 20 to 30 years on $86 million investment. If the cost of water continues to go up, what does that mean? That means that cost of putting in a desalination plant goes down. We recover our money quicker. Um, the last thing is, how many people here have a water softener at their house? You do realize that it's almost illegal to put them in any longer because of the contaminants going out to the ocean. Look that up. So think about what we're putting in the ocean, think about what we're drinking, and think about what the long-term process is for all of us. And in my case, I think it's desalinization. Any other comments, questions? Um, yeah, I just had, um, I mean, I want to do some more research of my own. Obviously, health issues are a concern for me. I have young children. Uh, it is a concern, though, that if we do go this route, um, it will only provide us with 30% of our water needs. So we're still importing 70%. That seems highly dependent still, in my opinion. So I just I'm a little bit skeptical at this point. I guess I, I just have one, one question. You mentioned at the, at the outset that the concern was if there was a major disaster up north, it would be cut off. Well, that sounds like it's a regional issue more than just a Simi Valley issue. So why aren't we looking for a regional solution rather than a Simi solution? Well, the region, there are regional solutions being looked at as well. But I will share with you other communities in our region are using groundwater. So they have other communities have better buffers than we do, and better control of their local resources than we do. Even though they, none of them, well, I think I'm not going to speak for everyone. Some of them, Camarillo, for instance, uh, uh, Oxnard, they, they, some of their water comes from groundwater, 
some of them comes from imported water. So they would, you know, they, they, their model is what I'm sort of proposing to you, is that we, we add to our portfolio by adding a local water resource. But, so on the regional picture, if you look at that, yes, there's some diversification already in other communities. But at some point, we're all on our own. I mean, our water company operates regionally. We get support from others. But at the end of the day, we're independent. We're financially independent. We run as Waterworks District 8. We got to make it on our own. So there are regional solutions being looked at. But this, 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 this is one of the, the local solutions we have to All right. So I don't think we have a motion. No, we don't. Um, what we're doing is we're taking all the testimony from this meeting, um, plus the other three neighborhood council meetings, and we're consolidating it and giving the report to the city council, and they will look at that when they do review the feasibility study, and we do not have a date when they're going to review the feasibility study. My recommendation would be if you want to keep, uh, keep tabs on that, um, get on the neighborhood council for email list you can go to the neighborhood council page on the city website and you can sign up to be on the e-list and then you well excuse me go to the city council page get on the city council list and then you will get agenda sent to you and you will know when it's going to be discussed you can also go to the neighborhood council page and get on the nc4 email list so you know what's happening here but you can get e-notified about the city council or you can, you'll read the paper or just keep an eye on the website. 